Hi, welcome to Life Artists, the place where we learn to embody our creativity. I'm Barbara Drubay, and I want to ask you, what do you think you were taught to focus for? To create or to be a worker? If you want to know more about it, check it out. Welcome back to this three-part dive into focus. I want to start simply today by saying that I know that for many of us are as if lack of focus is super frustrating and painful. But today we're going to explore where did this belief that we can't focus actually come from. I want you to ask yourself, is it really true? Do I really have a focusing problem? Or was I simply taught to focus on the wrong things? Now, I believe that you are not only capable of focusing, your body is focus. You simply were taught a specific way of focusing towards specific things, essentially teaching you to ignore your desires, your feelings, and to separate yourself from your bodily experience. Now, why? In my opinion, very simply, to control you, to make you a worker instead of a creator, and in doing so, to destroy your confidence and natural focusing abilities. If you are distracted and insecure, eh, unable to focus, the easier you are to control. Your present practice of focus was taught to you in school. Think about that for a minute. How you know how to focus was taught to you. And it meant sit still behind a little desk, don't move or have much energy. And every time we try to focus, it's kind of like this, right? We sit down, we narrow our movement and our viewpoint, we concentrate. But let me ask you, is this giving you the experience that you want? We were taught and learned this expression of focus through a lot of practice, a ton of practice. Think about it. I mean, to learn and in our desks and in our businesses today. And to be liked and therefore successful means to sit still behind a desk for hours, days, weeks. And it still does for most of us. We were taught to use our eyes predominantly and to move very little, to zoom inward. If you needed to move or had wide, uh, expansive perception, you were told there was something wrong with you. And you were told that you were unable to focus, that you had an attention problem. But is that really how focus is created, felt, and maintained? I mean, really? Or is that simply a way that a particular system of focus was taught? To control us. Now, do we reach truly high levels of focus when we sit still? Most of us hated this. We couldn't wait for recess. We couldn't wait to move, yell, express. And I maintain that our body is never meant to be still. Nothing is still in life. And practically, sitting still for an animal body means danger and tons of fear, i.e. discomfort, boredom, anger, now, let's get clear. Most of us in our experience today, as well as back then, we notice that the more we try to focus by sitting still, by barely breathing, by focusing on keeping distractions out, the more effortful and stressful that focus becomes. Now, our experience tends to become really tense and rigid when we try to concentrate in this way, when we try to decrease sensory input so that we can focus, right? And our perspective becomes much smaller based on this bodily expression. And we become much less focused. And then we enjoy learn less and we learn less. You are taught, and it's reinforced constantly today, that you are good if you are more a mind and less a body. Think about that for a minute. You are rewarded for your mental capacity, right? Schooling and achievement and our work and our jobs is about tests and measurements, predominantly of our cognitive ability to take in information and spit it back out, right? Now, far less value is placed on our whole experience, our individual qualities, our feelings, our expressive capacities, our movements, our physical senses, and the creative results that that brings. It's as if this becomes invaluable and less than below the great cognitive mind. Now add to that the shame that most of us grew up with surrounding our body. You know, body image, sexuality, our desires, our hungers, and our senses. 
are all as if pushed away, if not outwardly shamed in favor of our mental capacity. <sighs> but what has this created then in our experience, in our schooling? What did it create for you? Joy in learning, success in focus, action taking, excitement? Or did it create dulling boredom, loss of joy and energy, and an obsession with our self, our failures, our doubts, our inabilities? Look into your own experience, guys. How many of you experience pleasure, joy, liveliness, interest, and energy in this state of focus? And think about it again. When you are moving, relaxing, playing, connective, involved with all your senses, are you doubting yourself? Are you unable to focus or lacking in any way? Or is it actually easy to create? Is it actually easy when you're a body to achieve your desires? No? Now, focus is not what we were taught. And I maintain that focus taught this way was for one reason only, and that was to control you. <laughs> to keep you very busy with your failures instead of your manifesting, creating, and doing the things that you love and are great at. The more we practice focus as we were trained to, which means narrowing, which means little movement, which means fixed attention instead of wide involvement with life, the less we enjoy, the less we succeed, and the more anxious and tired we become, and the less we're able to focus. If you are believing that you cannot focus, I want you to rethink this, and I want you to really dare to shift this belief. You do not have a focus problem. You have just learned and practiced states of focus that aren't enjoyable. Remember, our body will not do what it does not enjoy. So now let's train to have a different experience of focus. Welcome to our training this week and we are looking at concentration and really how we are focusing narrow and how to bring our focus much wider. We're going to raise up our level of energy and bring that a lot of energy so that we can move back down into the body and allow our states of concentration, especially around our eyes, to relax and become wide again. So go ahead and just start shaking and moving your body. Oh, however feels good. Ah, really? Breathe deeply. Oh. Wake up energy. Let your body move how you need it. Shake your legs. And oh, let your shoulders. Women, let your tits shake. Ah, and now, take a breath. And we're going to start kicking and punching into the air. We're raising up energy quite quickly. Do just two kicks all around your body. And take a breath. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to jump up into the air, doing a contraction and landing while relaxing. And contract your face as well. And take a deep breath. Oh, feel this quick burst of energy. Oh, let your body move a little bit. Breathe deeply into your chest. Oh. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna swing our arms, and while you go down, you're gonna bend your knees like a and just feel the air around you. Let your eyes be soft. And look at the different perspectives where you show up. <sighs> 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 
Let your low back relax. Let your heads just allow your body to swing. Ah, oh, excellent. Now just roll down. Take a few deep breaths. And take a deep breath in. And roll down. And let your neck be long, like a big ball that's falling onto the floor. Your knees can be bent. This is not about stretching. It's about long and simple. Breathe out, roll down. Big breath in at the bottom. And breathe in and roll up. Oh, and one more time, breathe down. Feel your spine. Big breath at the bottom, breathe out. And now breathe up and roll up. Oh, and now bring your attention to your forehead and your eyes, and I want you to contract them very rapidly. Hold them for a second and slowly relax the area. And here we go, contract and slowly relax the area, breathing out. <sighs> Contract, and slowly relax the area. Big breath in, relax, relax, and contract. And slowly, slowly feel the relaxation, breathing in, breathing out. And now slowly contract your forehead and your arms, very, very slow. Feel each movement to the very end, contract, contract, contract. Keep going, feel this whole area. Really until it's going, 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 and then just drop it. Take a deep breath between this. And again, slowly contract the forehead and the eyes. Contract and contract and contract. All the way and feel how the rest of the body is responding, how our breath, this is what's happening when we're concentrating and then drop it. Take a deep breath. And slowly again, contract your forehead, your eyes. And really feel all this narrowing of your attention here and really contract, contract, contract. And now just drop it. And breathe and feel your eyes relaxing. And again. Contract slowly, slowly, slowly. And now just drop it. And now we're gonna do what's called stopping movement. Stopping movement is where we, every time there's a beat, you're going to move and look for a new place in all your body. We're gonna play with our area of our forehead and our eyes our fingers and our toes. And you're going to look really for new movements. Now while you're doing stopping movement, your fingers, your eyes, your toes, your forehead, Get your eyes really moving. Get your forehead moving.
And now stop, relax, take a deep breath. Oh, feel all these areas. And now you're going to make the sound. Let it vibrate your face. Let your hips relax, let your belly relax. And take a deep breath and feel your face, feel your eyes, feel your forehead. Now bring your hands up to your head and you're just gonna gently breathing. Let your face relax, let your eyes relax. <sighs> now relax your hands. Again, feel your eyes, feel your face. And we're, we're going to do a silence and concentration exercise. Okay? The movement is like this. You're going to bring your hands in a prayer position in front of your chest. It's moving in a small circle, not a big circle, just a small circle, up and down. Your eyes are following the tips of your fingers. You're breathing in while the circle goes up, breathing out while it goes down. Breathing in, breathing out. And now we're going to add our pelvis. Breathing in, pelvis goes back. Breathing out, pelvis goes forward. In, pelvis is back, out, pelvis is forward. Now the aim of these exercises is really to just fall into this movement. Let your eyes follow the tips of your fingers. Up, breathing in, pelvis backwards. Going down, pelvis forward. And you're breathing deep up into your chest and out. You're finding a rhythm that fits your breathing, but it's like a kind of a pump. And while you're doing this, you're trying to let go of effort. Let your shoulders relax. Rushing with your breath, just slow it down. Now these movements allow our brain to go into a almost like a theta state. And you're just continuing this movement of the pelvis, relaxing your knees, breathing in and out, and following the tips of your fingers. to the movement. And if it gets a bit strange, it's perfect. You're breaking the concentration patterns that you're holding. And you're going into a silent state of being through movement, through body attention. your jaw relax, close your eyes, and your body will just do little movements. 
Breathe in deeply and breathe out and let your body relax. There's no need to hold anything rigid. Experience and feel especially the area of your forehead and your eyes, around your head, your fingers, and your pelvis. Allow there to be this kind of gentle rocking. Allow your mouth to relax. Breathe in through your mouth and let your body just relax down and in. And now just notice this kind of wide, quiet body experience of focus, of concentration. Let your eyes open and just be quiet with this. Feel your face, feel the texture of your eyes. Let your face muscles and eye muscles just relax. Breathe and notice that this is what our bodies actually consider as concentration. It's a wide state all around our bodies. Now, while you're doing this in your daily life, when you start to notice your concentration getting narrow, just stop and do some contraction, letting go, movement of your eyes, put on some music and yeah. And then relax into just feeling this expression of your face when it's out of your routine of concentration. And be sure and join me for the rest of this video where we talk about how we're going to implement this concept, this idea, and talk about our collective we think. So be sure and stay tuned. Now, how are you feeling after that? How's your ability to notice around you and perceive? Better, no? Now feel free to use any part of this physical training to practice shifting past the conclusions that you hold about focus and move it to an embodied experience of focus and get back into flow. And if you want to dive deeper into this practice, plenty of implementations, things below, you can answer them and work on them during your week. But just make sure that while you're implementing, stay physical. And now I want to hear from you here at Life Artists. I call it doing a we think. It's where we share with our tribe and collectively rethink this subject. So tell us, what beliefs do you have about the right way of focus and how were you taught this? And what did this do to your creativity? And how did shifting your attention to your physical experience allow you to change your beliefs around what the right way to focus is? How did you feel after training and how do you plan to integrate this into your life today? Now get in on the conversation by jumping over to Life Artist's community blog and join our creator community. It's a fantastic community. And if you love what I'm doing, share this with others, comment, contact me, sign up for my YouTube page and find me on any of your favorite social media channels. And if you're serious about training these aspects, like getting your creativity into serious flow, make sure you sign up for my newsletter to get exclusive content, to get access into a lot of frame training and all of the info about our unbelievable live workshops in your area. They're all about what I call conscious creation which means consciously being the creator of your life. Thank you so much for joining me. And remember, you are the creator of your life and your experience is truly in your hands.